Hello, dear ones. Welcome back to another episode of Vroy. In this video, we'll be making a tutorial of post and animation on Vroy. Let's begin. So far, I've been showing some videos from zero to make starting from my default character all the way up to making your own personal character you know from stuck to an actual character a person so now you have to go over right there camera slash exporter and you just have to check if everything's all right if everything goes to your specifications and your design but sometimes there could be like small problems that at the beginning you won't actually notice like the ugly you have different selections over here you know it's actually normal from the software itself it actually comes with that like everything will be shown and here on the camera it actually keeps you your character's eye center it sure does have a so-called choice to synchronize but that's gonna be by default I don't know what was there from the beginning, but I'm just okay then you can uncheck them. You know, there's things like that. Once you go down here, you have a small variety of expressions. They start from the face, in general, to the eyebrows, more selective, and to the eye. For some reason, they actually came up with this five sliders you know the more you you use that slider then the more it changes this one over here on the tooth is a little bit new in a previous version like the 10.2 if i'm correct they didn't have none of those not the fan features because that's actually new on Vroid, which currently we're going into 11.3. So when you so let's go to the actual animation. When you go over here on the far left side, you'll see the third one that says host and animation. Once you click that, you'll be seeing a variety of options on your right side. It all goes from a simple gesture to making some actual, uh, let's say, like, like movement, but they're all actually like that. <laughs> you just have to zoom in a little bit and see your character from the side. Because once you make an animation, you'll be actually seeing what is really happening with the clothing and the hair I did make a, a video where if you select the hair bone group from your character's entire head things get a little bit weird true they produce for the makers of this software they want to make it as realistic as possible and that's fine so it's, it's sometimes like a little delicate bag, so it depends on how you use it. Sure, you won't mix, you won't understand it right now, but wait until I try this one. See how it starts moving? And some of the cloning actually starts making the actual effects, you know, like in taking shape that's the clearly normal 
and so far in this character there isn't any issues but it won't appear that easily so the more you check on different types of animation you'll eventually see something that is out of place or like a small glitch or an error is it unexpected? Probably. Usually you'll be seeing it around there, around the hip area. Like in this one that it's already been shown, in, but it's still fine until we start here really testing your character. So far here, there isn't any weirdness or any tap glitches. I said glitches because it, it really sometimes doesn't actually make things normally like they're on the shoulder on the far right side that's actually something I didn't quite expect it but it should be almost like that see normally when you choose the animation of jumping the hair physics will kick in on the hair that's for sure. It doesn't fail. And as you can see at the edge of the shirt, you see some actual real life faces going on. But so far, the character seems fine. There's no massive error or anything weird. We don't have to actually be doing this the entire time. Unless it's something like this. Right over here. That's... That's actually new. It's unexpected. The other time that I've been dealing with this software, I've never seen that type of... weirdness or glitch. I don't know which it actually falls into. Because, uh, again, this goes all the way back to the clothing editor, to the video I so show. It sometimes comes if you make the shirt too small, then something like this might happen. I'm not sure if that's actually supposed to be done, originally, or there's something of an error. I don't know if the creators or the programmers of this software, Leroy, will ever actually come across on this video. But if you do, you have something weird going on there. As in, this is a shirt. And you know, it's not that close to the body, so... What type of error? is going on here. I'm actually aware there's something close to the tightness, but my character, or this character, I'm better saying, is not that close to it. You know, the shirt is not skin tight, it's still loose. But, anyway, it's actually something here on the software itself. We can actually move along, it is just awkward. So when we go to the other scrolls, or the options person, we come along one that says pose. This one is far more simpler and way easier. I say that because if you compare it to PMS or MMD, there's a lot of difference here. MMD or Mifu Mifu Dance or PMX, they have a lot of joints. Sorry, correction, bones. Like here, and that's this is the other thing. When you check, select over here on the type of poses, it's already default from the software itself. Unlike in PMX and MMD, it's actually more in MMD, Mickey Mickey Dance, then you have to do it all of it by yourself. 
there are some other users that actually have some pre-made threads or pulses, but not like this. So this, this is kind of an advantage. Why? Because this, you see all of this green, blue, and purple dots? Every single one of them change a certain position of the character. It all depends on the angle and what type of rotation you have on the character. In this case, I can move up and down, but it's from this point of view. If I turn it on the side like this and do it again, the results are different. It's more like a forward and backward motion. And it is something you have to keep checking out all over. Unlike PMX or making it dance, they don't have an actual center bone. Which is kind of weird, because I can actually do this, and the model will actually stay in the same place. Sure, I can do it with both softwares, but this one is more locally. There I say. And this one just moved the head. On PMX, there's another bone slightly above it that moves like half the body, if I'm correct, or the eyes. Also, I'll, I'll show a video on them, because there's a few other more videos relating to this. Now, let's go back to the default. And just try something more simpler. And by that, I mean, I'll be making a character pose. Something that I'll just do it out of nowhere-ish. I'll, I'll just do it right now, right out of the bat. To see how easy you can actually be posing here. So this is new. Programmers of Gearwood, if you never mind. But it's still on that that specific part you can move it so freely and it's not going to a model. So you gotta tell me that one. You know. Still, over here is actually really simple. Reality. Um, it actually makes better sense of what is actually, you know, controlling what is specifically, you know, like that. You don't just control the elbow, you control basically the entire arm <laughs> up until the shoulder. And see, the, the big gun move. Only the forward and backward momentum. It just takes a little time of practice in reality. Which is so that you can actually pull it off. This is basically it. This is the um, simple pose that I made you know, out of the blue. This actually be made as it goes. Just to show you how to make a simple pose over here. So that should be all of it from this tutorial. You can mm -hmm. you can press the like, you can subscribe to the channel for further notifications. I'll see you 
Mira.